Special thanks to Schumann 3D Blast, Shine Wolf, Ministry of On Wii Control, Metric Conversion, Velsheran, Thingy, Lemon314 and Lord Entropy for their generous sponsorship of my videos. Visit David X Newton on Patreon for the backer chat and extra content. One of the little things that I was fascinated by when I first saw Transport Tycoon in 1994 was the names that it gave to its towns. Each new generated world would come up with new amazing and ridiculous place names like Mudworth, Barfwell and Chipping Sodbury. In the demo version of the original game you could choose between two town naming options, the English set and an option that was called European but had a decidedly Germanic slant. In the full game an option called American was added, but to be honest I couldn't really identify how American the results were. With the game's enhanced re-release, Transport Tycoon Deluxe, the European set officially became German and three further options were added, French, Latin American and Silly. At the time I'm putting this video together, OpenTDD has 21 built-in options for town names, with styles drawn from languages around the world and the potential for further ones to be added through new GRF. The code for making up the names is surprisingly involved and varies a lot from language to language, so here's a look at some of them. As you would reasonably expect, most of the code for deciding on the names for towns is in townname.cpp, with the initial point of entry being a function called generate town name. This function is called in three places, during world generation at the beginning of a game, from the scenario editor when generate random towns is selected, or when the player tries to start a new town from the found town window if the game settings allow it. When generate town name is called, it will ask OpenTDD's pseudo random number generator to give it an unsigned 32 bit random number. This means it will be a binary sequence of 32 ones and zeros, representing a whole number from zero to approximately 4.3 billion. After doing some validation to ensure uniqueness, it will store this number as a property of the town under the name Town Name Parts, then declare that it's finished and will move on. You might have felt there was something fairly vital missing from that function, but surprisingly towns don't actually have their names stored in their data. There is another property on the town objects called Name, but by default it remains blank. It only gets used to store whatever the player entered if the town is renamed. Any time the game finds it needs to display the name of a town, it will look for that custom name first, and if there isn't one it will take the town name parts number and run it through a town name generator to find out how the name should be displayed. The generator used depends on the town names option that was selected when the world was first started, and they all use a town's town name parts number as a seed to arrive at a name in their own ways. When a town is created, it also remembers the generator that should be used to construct its name on the town name type property. It's logically possible to have different towns in the same game that use different name generators, and you can edit things around to do so, but with the default way that world generation currently works, this never happens. Of the 21 generators available, 5 of them aren't really generators in the strictest sense. The French, Romanian, Spanish, Slovak and Swiss ones simply use the town name parts number to pick one of a predetermined set of real town names from a list. Most of them have a library of about 90 names, but the Swiss set provides a generous 123 and the French set a scant 70. Using these sets of names will actually cause problems on very large maps, because when the code runs out of possible names it will stop being able to generate towns and it will result in a prohibitively barren game. Most of the generators are much more involved than this, and work by extracting multiple numbers out of the town name parts seed value to construct a name out of pieces. They do this by using some bitwise operations that I went slightly too into in the previous video about the tile update cycle. A common theme of these generators is that they have to get a smaller sequence of bits out of the long town name parts number, with different starting positions from the right and different lengths of the sequence to extract. The English town name options are the ones that I use the most, and there are two different generators for English available. Their names are English Original and English Additional, and they take very different approaches to piecing names together. This town internally has been awarded as its town name parts seed number. When using the English original generator, town names are always made up of six pieces, which the code calls segments. A possible prefix, then three small segments to make up the first half of the town name, one more to make the second half of the name, and finally a possible suffix. Each of these is picked out of a list of strings hard coded into townname.h, with lists of possibilities of varying lengths for each of the six segments. 
To decide on what each segment of the name should be, the code will pick out a shorter binary number out of a certain part of the seed number. Awkwardly for the sake of this diagram, the parts of the number read for each segment go from right to left. Each time the code will extract 16 binary digits, starting from the right hand side for segment 1, and a few digits further to the left for each segment afterwards. Each segment's 16 digit binary number will now represent a decimal number from 0 to 65535. This number is put through a function called seed chance, which will multiply the number by the length of the list of choices for this segment. In segment 3's case, the code specifies 8 of them, and it will then divide the result by 65536. This will result in a number that can range from 0 to the length of the list minus 1, which would give us the last entry. It's easier to make sense of this equation if we turn it around a bit into this form, which is more intuitive for humans, and it makes it clearer that we're getting a random fraction of the maximum possible number we want. The reason the computer doesn't do it this way is because we're working with integers which have no concept of fractions. If the division was done first, then as soon as an integer was divided into a fraction, it would be rounded down to zero. So now let's step through each segment with this seed number to find out what the town's name should be. We'll talk about the middle four segments first, which make up the main part of the town name. In this particular number, the second segment's value works out to decimal 11583, and 11583655366, out of the 26 possible combinations of letters in the list for this segment, gives us index number 4, which is BR. The next three segments are worked out the same way. 26023 gives us index 3 out of the list of 8, IN. 27828 gives us 2 out of 7, which is ding, and 44438 gives us 15 out of 23, which is head. The first and last segments have another step in addition to this process. If we were treating these lists the same as the others, the game would always have to pick a prefix and suffix, but you'll have noticed that OpenTDT only occasionally gives these out. This is done by using an alternative function to seed chance called seed chance bias. Where the normal function would multiply our random number by the length of the list, C chance bias adds a value to that length first and then subtracts the same number after the multiplication and division is done. The effect of this is to artificially add more possibilities to the range of random numbers. The extra possible results are below zero, and the generator will interpret any value less than zero as blank. The original English town name generator has four options for prefixes, great, little, new and fort. Seed chance bias is used here with a bias value of 50, so this will make the number generator act like it's picking from a list of 54 possibilities, including 50 which will be treated as blank. This means there will be about a 1 in 13 chance that a given town will get any of the four prefixes. In our case, the number we got from the seed for this segment is 54270, which will give us 44 after the multiplication and division. 44 minus our bias number of 50 is negative 6, and as the value is below 0, the code discards it and moves on without adding a prefix. The other end of the name works in the same way, except with a list of 9 suffixes and a bias of 60, making a 2 in 15-ish chance of a suffix appearing. This time our extracted number is 60261, and after all the mathematics, this comes out to the number 63. Taking the 60 off again gives us index 3 of the list, meaning that we get a suffix, and we can now see that the town's complete name, as seen on the map, is the frightfully English Brindinghead Cross. The game goes through this whole routine every time it needs to display the name of the town, but it will always get the same result because the values are all based on the town's stored seed number. And just like the tile update cycle, because it's decided using that thing I promised I wouldn't say, it's a very quick operation. Looking at the raw number of possibilities out of the name segments, taking into account the blank possible prefix and suffix, and the way that S appears twice in the second segments list, the original English town name generator has 1,610,000 possible names for towns. However, not all of them can be reached because of the way that the numbers taken out of the seed overlap each other. For example, for the generator to get the first possible prefix great, the 16 rightmost digits of the seed number that dictate this segment have to work out to a minimum of 60682. At this value, the next segment for the starting letters of the main town name is already at a value of 3792, which is high enough to work out as the second entry in the second list. Therefore, you can never have a town with a name that begins with the letters WR and has a prefix, and there are other conflicts like this all over the list. 
As an experiment, I made the game go through all 4.3 billion possible random seed numbers and write any unique names to a file, and it came out with a much lower 64,272 possibilities, which would still be enough for any plausibly sized map. Having got that list, I found myself curious about the statistics of the generated names. The longest possible town names with this generator are 29 letters long out of the 32 characters that the game allows, and there are 8 names that hold this record. At the other end of the scale, 42 possible town names have just 5 letters, all of which have one letter in segments 2 and 3, the blank option in segment 4, and the ending ham. All of that is just the way that one generator chooses to use the seed number, and it's very static in always picking six segments. Many of the other generators have more of a branching set of decisions to them. The English additional town name generator has more of a flowchart to it, and its names can have a variable number of segments, greatly increasing the number of possible names. This time, let's go through this chart with the aim to make this name for the amusement of my daughter. By running all the possibilities, I came up with this seed number, and this makes it through the flowchart like this. Our first stop will be the same as the English original generator, taking the rightmost 16 bits to give us a small chance of producing a prefix against a bias number of 50. This time, the options Saint and Old are added to the list of prefixes, slightly increasing the chance a town will get one. In this case, our number is 15,360, which still isn't anywhere near high enough to get a prefix, so this is skipped. Now we come to a branch. We use the same approach with our seed number to make a decision, except without involving a list this time. If the 16-bit number starting from bit 3 gives us a number greater than 14 out of 20 after being divided by 65536, we'll go down the north path. There, we would select from a list called 1A, which consists of prepared starting halves of a name like Inver and Cantor and Bath. Our number for this decision works out to just over 10,000, which is about 3 20ths of 65536 and isn't enough to pass this condition. So here we go down a different path that behaves more like the original town name generator did, where two segments of one or two letters each are used to start the main part of the town name. The number from bit 6 is used to pull from list 1b1, then bit 9 from 1b2, and this gives us our first three letters. After that, we come to another branch, this time testing whether the bit 11 number gives us greater than 4 out of 20. Our number passes this condition this time, so the next addition to the name comes from bit 12 against list 1b3a, which contains only the letters n, d, t and 3 blanks, and this seed happens to select t. If this condition doesn't pass, the code instead chooses from an alternative list called 1b3b, with the longer possibilities Ning, Ding and Fing. Thankfully, things are more straightforward from now on. No matter what branches the code went down, they all converge together here, and we now look at the seed from bit 14 to select from list 2, which has an expansive list of over 50 town name endings. After that, the number from bit 15 will give us the suffix. The list of possibilities is more than doubled from the original town name generator, but the bias value remains the same, meaning that this time there's a much greater 1 in 4 chance of a town getting a suffix. A high-valued result from this section of the seed means that the town is awarded the suffix falls. The routine is now complete, we can annihilate a bus in celebration, and the name is now displayed. If we alter the code to force a town to have this town name parts number and generate a new world, then sure enough we get… Bootney Falls? What happened to our sophomorically hilarious rude name? It turns out there's one more phase that both the English name generators go through, which makes some emergency replacements if piecing together the first part of the town name has resulted in any randomly generated vulgarities. This helps the game avoid any embarrassing names, because real English towns are also very careful about this. Also included among the hard-coded table of substitutions are some combinations of letters that just don't read very well, and awkward syllables like this are replaced with more believably English ones. However, due to what seems to be an oversight in the code, these combinations can be left intact if the town is awarded a prefix as well, so there is a very small chance that you'll still encounter something absolutely monocle dropping. Surprisingly, despite the much higher chance of getting a suffix, the additional generator's median town name length is actually two characters shorter than the original one. The additional generator never reaches 29 characters, and only has six possible names that are 28 characters long. There are also 21 possibilities of just four characters, which is shorter than anything the original generator can come up with. 
That's taken about a quarter of an hour to cover 7 out of the 21 possible town name generators, so I'm not going to go into all of them with the same level of detail, but the other ones work on the same principle. Extract smaller numbers out of the main town name parts number, and use those to influence the options that are picked from lists of name fragments or the decisions on a flowchart. The German generator, for example, uses a combination of all the things that we've seen so far, with a tree of decisions that can result in creating a name from syllables or a real-life town name with optional embellishments. First, it uses the number starting at bit 7 to determine whether the name will get a prefix or suffix, with a total of a 3 out of 28 chance. Unlike the English generators, a name will only ever have one or the other. A prefix is chosen if the resultant number has the curiously specific values 12 or 19, and a suffix if it's 24. For the main part of the name, it will first use the bit 3 number to pick a string from a combination of two lists, one of which has about 20 real German town names, with the other having an impressive collection of nearly 100 opening halves. If one of the halves was chosen, then the bit 5 number is used as well to select a suitable ending. Other highlights include the Polish generator, which creates variable lengths of names by picking out of an incredible ten lists, because it rather old-fashionedly has to choose a gender for the name before piecing it together from separate masculine, feminine and neuter options. The Austrian approach is similarly involved, covering many different cases with different likelihoods of having certain prefixes or suffixes depending on the main name chosen, and I particularly enjoy this note on the code that picks from one of its lists of prefixes, which makes it sound like it's admonishing some dis disgusting person called Maria. The silly names, which to be honest are often virtually indistinguishable from the English ones, are constructed very straightforwardly compared to all of these and use just two lists. There are 15 English cosy sounding town name endings available in one list, and the other contains a substantial library of vaguely hilarious words. For your entertainment I will recite them now. Binky Blubber, Bumble Crinkle, Crusty Dangle Dribble, Flippity Google Muffin, Nosy Pinker, Quack Rumble, Sleepy Sliggles, Snooze Teddy, Tinkle Twister, Pinker, Hippo, Itchy Jelly Jingle, Jolly Kipper, Lazy Frog's Mouse, Quack, Cheeky Lumpy Grumpy, Mangle Fiddle, Slugs, Noodles Poodle, Shiver Rumble, Pixie Puddle, Riddle Rattle, Rickety Waffle, Sagging Sausage, Egg, Sleepy Scatter, Scramble, Silly Simple, Trickle, Slippery Slimy, Slumber Soggy, Sliggles Splutter, Sulky Swindle Swivel, Tasty Tangle Toggle, Trotting Tumble, Snooze Water Windy, Amble Bubble, Cheery Cheese, Cockle, Cracker, Crumple, Teddy, Evil Fairy Falling, Fishy, Fizzle, Frosty, and finally Griddle. Out of the 88 entries in this array, 7 appear in the list twice – Pinker, Quack, Rumble, Sleepy, Sliggle, Snooze, and Teddy. It's hard to say whether this is intentional. The list goes through several runs of alphabetically sorted names as if they were thought up in separate batches, but other name lists have duplicates in them to give certain combinations more chance of appearing, so these could have just been intentionally given more favour. Finally, I also want to give a special mention to the check generator, which is so mind-bogglingly complicated that I daren't even try to start comprehending it. It starts off fairly normally, with some prefix and suffix choices, but then rapidly goes wild by selecting what it refers to as a dynamic substantive, which may or may not contain a stem that gets trimmed according to whichever of the ambitious eight genders it chooses, creating a mask to limit the choices from other lists, depending on whatever the result of that was, with a note to avoid overflowing while modifying the objectivum, doing some character substitutions and then deciding on a postfix ending and suffix depending on decisions made throughout the rest of the tree. All I can say to anyone watching this video who can speak Czech is, well done. So that's just some of the ways that OpenTDD can piece together its town names. I find the multiple name generators to be an underappreciated but really positive effect of the game being open source. It's nice to think that multiple people from different places around the world have contributed these amazing little software machines that work in the background to give the game some of its unique flavour. Thank you to everyone on the left here for supporting me creating Stumbling Tours videos. If you'd like to join in or make suggestions for other games to cover, please have a look at David X. Newton on Patreon.